43 seasons in the last two decades of The Bachelor and its subsidiary spinoffs like The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, etc. And people are still gobbling this shit up. It's no secret that reality TV has commandeered the broadcast airwaves the last 20 years or so and become one of the highest grossing and most popular TV genres that exist. Tim taught me how to eat a Kit Kat and it's pretty life changing. Now I'm not gonna sit here and throw shade at people that enjoy watching reality television to entertain themselves. At the end of the day, how people choose to entertain themselves is their decision and it doesn't really matter as long as it's not hurting anybody. I might like to play Call of Duty, but my wife watches Keeping Up with the Kardas uh, 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 Kardashian sometimes. And that's fine. Some people even go as far as to watch Leon Lush on YouTube, which you're actually doing right now, and I'm here to congratulate you because your IQ is in the top 1%, and most people that know you probably want to be you. But all that's to say, I just have this peculiar aversion for reality television. I just, I, I hate the relationship ones, the bachelor, the bachelorette, get 15 chads to battle it out for the heart of this young lass waiting in the decision room with a bunch of roses trying to sell this fairy tale story to the poor suckers at home watching this, thinking this has anything to do with reality or real life or whatever. What being in a relationship actually is like. Unsurprisingly, a huge percentage of these relationships do not work out because a lot of the people are probably there just for clout and money and the people that are actually there to try and find true love are stupid. So now that you have some background about how I feel about reality television, not only can you die happy now, we can get into today's topic of the video, which is a new Fox television show called Labor of Love, which is a direct ripoff of The Bachelorette, except instead of 15 chads fighting over a woman for her hand in marriage, it's 15 chads fighting over who's gonna be the dude that dumps a load in this woman because she's 41 and really wants to have kids and her biological clock is ticking and she's desperate to have a kid. This is Christy, former contestant on The Bachelor in 2007. Shocker. After recovering from a failed marriage that lasted only six months, she's now 41, lonely, and childless, and thought what better way to find a suitable father for her future child than to let 15 clout-hungry boomers try and convince her why their dad material in this contrived pile of shit excuse for what real life is actually like. <sighs> Before we jump in, just a quick shout out to Amanda from the YouTube channel Swell Entertainment. She popped up in my recommended this past week, which is why the show was even on my radar. She does a nice summary, talks about the show's first episode when it first came out a couple weeks ago, but she doesn't actually really show any clips from the show. Which is an A-plus move on her part, because if you even whisper the name of a major network television show, you get choppers flying above your house trying to copyright your whole life to shit. But I'm gonna take a chance at it because here on the Leon Lush YouTube channel, we're fortunate to have some very strategic brand partners that keep my coffers bursting at the seams when corporate greed tries to hold me down. That's why no hat and no hair product Leon is on deck to talk about today's video sponsor, Mac Weldon. Yeah. As a 6'3", 270 pound unit, Finding comfortable and stylish menswear for everyday use is kind of like finding the holy grail. Since Mack Weldon reached out a few months ago about a partnership, I took the opportunity to spend some time with their products and get to know the company a bit, and I've been nothing but impressed. In my experience with their product line so far, I can tell you that the comfort and the quality of their fabrics is insane. Now, I'm not gonna explain Chub Rub to you because if you know, you know, but the Air Knit Boxer Brief has been a game changer for my thighs. Cool, dry, and frictionless, baby. But it's not just underwear. From socks to shorts to raincoats, they have you covered for your dress ups, your workouts, and your dress downs. And since I work from home, I've quite literally been living in their air knit boxer brief, the A sweat shorts, and their silver line of V-neck tees, which is naturally antimicrobial, helping eliminate odors. And I'm not saying I normally smell or anything, but it's you know it's better to be it's better to be safe. <laughs> Their website is intuitive and simple to use, which made my shopping experience wonderful, and they offer tremendous perks to their valued customers through a loyalty program called Weldon Blue. It yeets the shipping costs, can save you 20% on all your orders, and gives you early access to new products. And they believe in their products so much that if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can just keep it and they'll refund you the full amount, no questions asked. So if you're a guy that likes to feel comfortable while looking sharp like myself, you got nothing to lose. You head over to MacWeldon.com, choose some clothes that you like, and use my promo code LeonLush at checkout for 20% off your very first order. You won't regret it. I appreciate you guys. Our story starts with Christy. 
So they reel you in with a beautifully crafted intro that introduces the premise. We found 15 sexy and sophisticated men who are ready to skip the dating and go straight to baby making. Then they tease your taint a little bit with a taste of all the best moments yet to come in the season. We got challenges. To help Christy on her journey, we had the men show off their parenting and partnership skills. Drama. He's pretty pissed right now. Somebody else got the credit for my initiative. There's a snitch in the house. Why? You gotta stop talking. I need to know. This can easily become this if it has to. Fucking say it to my face, bro. You're what, like 5'4"? <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> and most importantly for all you softies out there. Romance. You are the one that made this real for me. This is beautiful, right? Oh my god. This is the most romantic date I've ever been on. Here's to a love story. <laughs> I think I might be falling in love. It's exactly what I always dreamed about. Hell no. To the no, no, no. Yeah, I'm Kristen Davis. Welcome to Labor of Love. Oh, and also it's hosted by Charlotte from Sex in the City, which probably means nothing to you unless you're a female or a gay man in your 30s. <laughs> My name is Christy. I'm 41 years old. I live in Chicago, and I'm currently single. Thank you so much. I made the difficult decision to file for divorce six months after standing at the altar. They felt like I was never going to get to have my own family. <laughs> Come on, Christy, stop it. You're going to have a family someday. That's why you're on this show. I mean, statistically speaking, it's probably just going to be you and your kid because after the press and the 15 minutes of fame dries up, dad's going to fly back to L.A. to continue pursuing his acting career and indulging in his weird habit of getting drunk on Chardonnay and texting dick pics to 20-year-olds, but that's still family, technically. <laughs> I know that was a little aggressive. I really do want what's best for Christy. I truly wish nothing but happiness for her, but shows like this, I just do not trust them. I'm definitely a little anxious about my test results. Yes. I mean, at 41. The levels look very good. Um, better than your chronological age. So there's hope. There's hope. So we get to know Christy a little bit, then she heads to the fertility doctor and the doc's like, hey, you're 41, but you're still fertile. And by the way, smoke show for your age. He didn't actually say that, but come on, she looks good for 41. And then they ship her off to Atlanta. They pack her into a Tesla and they scuttle her up to this weird mansion in the middle of nowhere where I'm sure uh, the 15 men will be battling like gladiators for her to become uh, the womb that carries their child. Hi, I came to welcome you, and what Thank better way to welcome you to Georgia than a peach pie? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. <laughs> I don't even know sweet. if I should say this, but like, Charlotte was my girl. So this is when she meets the host and just freaks out about how she's Charlotte from Sex in the City for a while. Like I said, she's 41, obviously a huge Sex in the City fan. If you're under 30, probably have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm Marcus, I'm 39 years old, I'm an anesthesiologist. I'm Trent, I'm a tennis instructor. I've got a huge family. Having three older sisters has made me like the woman whisperer, like a horse whisperer, but I'm like the woman whisperer. So then the bros start rolling in and it's just one handsome Chad after another. I mean, there is enough chiseled jawlines and expensive suits in this crowd to make even Dwayne Johnson feel insecure. I imagine this is exactly what a GQ men's calendar shoot would look like. We got the token small town Southern boy. I'm Jason, I'm from Huntersville, North Carolina, and I'm my own flooring and innovation business. The former professional wrestler that you can tell is 5'3 just by looking at his face. I'm Matt. I'm a former professional wrestler. All right. Wrestling connects me with my dad. When I was seven years old, my dad asked me if I wanted to see someone fly. The self-proclaimed CEO. My name is Stuart. I'm 40 years old from Los Angeles, California, and I'm a CEO. Hello, hello. So hello. And what's the point of having all the money in the world but you have no, nobody to share it with? Subtle flex much? The Italian guy. My name is Angel. I grew up in a tough neighborhood. Mr. Hot, explosive and intense. Yeah, I can be explosive. I can be hot sometimes. But I'm quick to every emotion. The women who like me like me because I'm intense. And obviously a guy from Queens. <laughs> I'm Mario, and I own a business in healthcare. I'm the kid from Queens with big dreams. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think I've ever seen a reality show without some dude from Queens in it. They are like to reality shows what chewing tobacco is to baseball. And there's a bunch more, but my guilty pleasures here, okay, if I'm being honest, are Gary. I'm Gary, and I own my own company making baseball bats. Baseball bats, Gary? Who the frick makes baseball bats for a living? What an absolute long dick legend this man must be. You watching this right now, you can't look me in the eye and tell me that you know somebody or know somebody that knows somebody even that makes baseball bats for a living. That is a one in a billion. Gary is absolutely precious. I hope this man wins. <clears throat> My name's Stuart, I'm a CEO. Hi, I'm Gary, I make baseball bats for a living. So you obviously have the tall alliance going on over there. Like, we'll be like the short blazer alliance right here. I'm the shortest dude here. And my personal favorite of the bunch. What's up, man? How you doing? Budge. Nice to meet you, Nice budge. to meet you as well. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Did you say bud? It's actually budge, B-U-D-G-E, right? Oh, budge. Oh, okay, I, I'm sorry, as in like, 
as in I'm trying to roll over this hippopotamus, but it's too heavy and it won't budge. Like that, <laughs> like that kind of budge. Fuck yes, I love this guy. My name is Budge. I'm a conservative man with morals, and we're here to hopefully be a father or maybe find the love of our life. So I'd prefer not to have a cocktail. And he's straight edge and not giving in to the obvious pressures of this awkward situation? This is the man you want to raise your child because you know that when push comes to shove, when that baby is born and shit hits the fan, he's not gonna budge. <laughs> budge will not budge. <laughs> he will not even budge. Got it. Mm. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Welcome, gentlemen. Meet Christy. Good. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so finally, Christy shows up, comes down the stairs. All the dudes collectively pop a chubby, and then there's a little bit of awkward mingling that goes down. Are you guys comfortable sharing with me what kind of made you decide to say yes to this? I was like, you got to like open yourself up one day, and, and so like I'm here to take that giant leap. I've been thinking a lot over the last couple of years, like how do I really find the girl who I just love? And I just thought, hey, I'm gonna go. Okay. Oof. That was heavy stuff. Part of this process is figuring out if you're all fit enough to be fathers. Oh my God. <laughs> that is messing up. <laughs> Y'all are ruthless. Man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, everybody needs to take one, please. Yes, dude. Wasting no time right now. I mean, the dude showed up, they mingled, they sized each other up, they met Christy for like 10 seconds, and then boom! Right off the bat, they're unzipping their $1,500 Armani suit pants to J. Owen to a specimen cup. Classic reality, isn't it? Those are specimen cups. I did not see this coming, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I just, I just cannot let a good pun go to waste. God oh, almighty. We're not here to mess around. I feel like I'm involved in a scandal right now. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Mobile collection center. Since there's no way to make this less awkward, I suggest we just get right to the task. Well, this is awkward, but this is an absolute necessary step for anyone who wants to be a father, you know? Come on, I'm not doing this. I'll just sit there. Like, nah, I ain't doing it. I mean, I'm send the limo, get my luggage. Yeah. I'm going home. Yeah. Come on, budge! You were my guy, Budge. What is the matter with you? You want to convince me, and more importantly, Christy, that you're man enough, that you're ready to father her child, and you won't even do the first thing that she asks of you, Budge? Send the limo, get my luggage, yeah. I'm going home. Yeah. Welcome to Red Flag City. Population, Budge. And you probably think that Jay Owings is a sin, too, judging by your aversion to alcohol, but sometimes if you want to get the girl, you got to get your hands dirty, Budge. You know what? Let's just keep watching and give Budge a chance to come around. I have completely lost it. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have done something like this <laughs> in the past five days. Yeah, what's today? The past five oh, days. Oh, shoot. Right here. This girl. Hey, <laughs> uh, By the way, every guy that's not putting their hand up is lying. Except maybe Budge. I haven't figured him out yet. Okay, he's feeling pretty confident. Okay, very good, very good. Philip, Philip and Gary, very good, thank you. Thank All right. You. My gosh, I mean, so many things are going through my head. So the next several minutes is these guys just going into this trailer six at a time in Jay Owing next to each other while the trailer rocks back and forth and everyone's outside waiting and watching. <laughs> Tommy! Knocking it out. Look, I'm a professional wrestler. My sperm will be able to do backflips off the top rope, body slam 400 pound guys, and entertain millions and millions of people around the world. I got this. All right, please tell me the producers fed him that line, because if not, this guy has got to go. Let's go, Budge. Come on, Budge. At this point, budge. I'm thinking there's no way in the world. Budge, do not let me down, Budge. But, okay, she's the reason I'm here. Yes! I can't wait to spend one-on-one -on -one time with Christy. So, this drill is gonna get a little messy. Hey, I'm giving you that. Yeah. That's all I'm giving you. I didn't see anything. Yes! Budge finally decided to come around. <laughs> you finished that thing off, huh? Everything. You, your sample's gonna have cross eyes in there. Of course, Backwoods Billy is already legless drunk slurring his speech 15 minutes into the show. Definitely father material. <laughs> you, you do it. You do it. Yeah, let's go. I would like to turn it over to an expert. Dr. Kaplan, would you do the honors? I will. When we do the analysis, 
Uh, we looked at four things. We looked at the volume of sperm. So apparently it wasn't embarrassing enough to have these guys J.O. in front of everybody else. They turn it into a competition. They bring out the fertility doctor who has tested the results, and they turn it into an award ceremony and give a first place trophy to the guy with the most dense sperm with count. With 317 million active swimmers. Showing off. Goes to... Alan. Get out of town, really? <laughs> Yeah. Nice job. I gotta say, before the joy even kind of found its place, it was shock. I, I, I was. What? Okay, listen, I am firm in my stance that reality television, for the most part, is absolute dog shit. And I will not budge. But that was fantastic television. Proper dining room nice. area. Nice. The cliche house tour is next. Then they happen upon this cute and tasteful fatherhood wall piece. You guys see wow. this? Look, fatherhood. That's awesome right there. This reminds us why we're here, man. Yeah. Fatherhood. That means making babies. It means raising babies. Burned. Touche. Very good. Party time. Game's on. Is it on tap? Hell yeah. Yo. Then Backwoods Billy gets even more drunk and ends up puking all night long. First impressions are a real bitch. There's a barbecue set up for you out back. Come on, go. Let's go. Why not? Get out. This way. Oh, wow. So it's the next day, and it's barbecue time now. I mean, they got cornhole, they got Jenga, they got croquet. I am high key jealous. I mean, Christy's next door, right? It'd be nice if she came over and joined the barbecue. How do we, like, uh, serenade her? Serenade her to come over. Do we all know a song that we can serenade Cindy with to get over here? Cindy? Who's, uh, who's Cindy? Sorry. Whoa. Whoa. Then Mr. Tall and Handsome makes the fatal mistake of forgetting her name and gets lambasted by the rest of the crew. Then they proceed to implement this horribly contrived piece of writing where she acts like she's just sitting in her house on her iPad not knowing what's going on and they all chant from next door to get her to come down to the barbecue. I mean, it is just chef's kiss. Let's just yell her name. Christy! 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 Hey! No, I get it. Alan, can you interrupt you? I'll happily be Sorry, time. brother. Oh. Nice to talk to you. You as well, Alan. Enjoy, buddy. Hello. Hi, Jason. Oh, okay, where did you pull these from? I wouldn't know what to get. Your rebellious side. So more mingling and drinking, and then they move on to these, you know, one-on-one -on -one sessions where they all have a chance to get to know her a little bit briefly before they get stolen away, and the other guy moves in. I'm feeling really conflicted because Jason was really drunk at the party, and he definitely didn't give off the best first impression. Facts. But the Jason I'm talking to you tonight, I could see him being father material. Yeah, everyone can act like they're father material when they're sober. And then they go out and drink a fifth of whiskey and come home and beat the wife and kids. Seen it a billion times. You really cannot trust somebody until you've seen how they handle themselves when they're hammered. That is a fact. All right, well, maybe you can trust them as like a friend or something. But if you're trying to put them on the fast track to become the father of your child and they got pants shitting drunk at the orientation of the little reality show you're doing... Probably a little bit of a red flag. You know, you know, Matthew, I hate to break so, up the tea party, but it's, but I gotta. It is so much trying to date 15 guys at once. <laughs> Just wait till halfway through the season when they're all trying to pipe you down. It's tougher than I thought, but I'm dating to fall in love with the guy who could be the father of my children. Hi, Chris, hi. Philip, how are could you? I, good, I'm good. Sit down, do you please. Want, or, can we, could I, can we go inside? I'll show you the house a little yes, bit and I warm up. Yes, I'm, let's do that. I brought my jacket okay. I never wear. Perfect. <laughs> Philip, he's so nervous, but he's really cute. I hope you like these. I truly believe these are moon rocks. That's so I cool. I bring these because they make me feel comfortable. Yeah. Really, Philip? Moon rocks? <laughs> Get that fairy tale shit out of here. She wants a family, not a horoscope. Do you feel like you're ready to have a family? Yeah. What do you think of Jason? Jason. I will be the first to say I did not like his behavior at our first meeting. Yeah, I was I mean, a little it, concerned. It really concerned me, yeah. too. Should we go to his profile page? Yeah. I know. There you go. So finally, we're getting towards the end of the show, and we arrive at what's like the equivalent of the rose ceremony, except this time she's on an iPad that's linked up to a TV that all the guys can see that are in a separate house, and she's just in there dragging their profile pictures to, like, the keep or the not keep or, like, need to chat with, and they're all just sitting in the room getting to watch it. Just absolute torture, I imagine. Well, it may feel awful for you guys standing here. It's not necessarily a bad thing. We need to talk could mean Christy wanted a chance to tell you that she appreciates you, or it could mean you're going to go home. So I'll spare you the drawn out sappy ending to the episode. Basically she sends one of the old Chads home because he's boring. 
I don't see us starting a family together. You're boring! It's unfortunate, of course, that we couldn't communicate a little better. Unsurprisingly, Philip gets yeeted. You were one of the guys here that I was most looking forward to getting to know. But I just don't feel like we're on the same timeline. I don't see us starting a family together. Nice moon rock trick, idiot. <laughs> Stuart gets head fake because she invited him to the chat just to tell him how much she appreciated how nice he was to her. Stuart, as you know, there's a lot of men here that I need to get to know. You've made me feel seen, appreciated, and like a lady. You. <laughs> <laughs> Please join the other fathers to be downstairs. Oh, oh, yeah! Then small town pickup truck backwoods, Billy gets a little sit down at the end to have a heart to heart to talk about his drinking problem. I think I still need to understand your drinking. I had too much to drink. Okay. I mean, that's all it was. Like, I haven't drank since. Okay. And uh, I'm really not planning on it. Okay. Yeah. Join those guys downstairs. <laughs> what do you say? I will do that. Okay. Basically, she was like, Philip, I didn't like that you got drunk. And he's like, nah, it's cool. I won't do it anymore. And she's like, okay, you can stay. <laughs> I'm sure that's worth a bottle Tonight, of champagne. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. that's worth a bottle of champagne. I mean, well, yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yep. And I'm thinking to myself, uh-oh, here we go again. Then he starts guzzling champagne at the end of the episode. So that concludes the pilot episode of the show. And as I'm recording this now, I believe there's been four episodes out, but they're all obviously pretty long. There's no way I could get to all of them, and in no way did I want to. The main reason the show piqued my interest initially was because of the actual premise seemed just a little shady to me. Like with The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, who gives a shit? You got these clout-hungry, money-hungry, fame-chasing people want to go on and find true love, trying to battle 15 other people for blah, blah, blah. It's nonsense, right? You get in People Magazine, you get a bunch of people following you for a while, and then eventually your relationship fizzles out and dies. You wash your hands of it, and you've maybe made a little money and have a couple extra Instagram followers. Great. But in this case... The whole goal, the whole point is to bring another human being into the world, to have a child with someone, to fast track a father figure, like skip everything else and just be like, hey, can you be a father? Cool. Dump some seeds into me and let's have a kid because I'm 41 and I'm running out of time. That just seems a little bit selfish and maybe not the best forecast for the future of that child's family life if the history of all these other Bachelor shows are any indication of how it's going to go down. That being said, obviously it's not uncommon for kids to be raised by single parents or by parents that are co-parenting after having gone their separate way and been in other relationships. Nothing's wrong with that. But to me, the whole premise of the thing kind of just feels like it undermines the seriousness of what it means to bring another human into the world and then the subsequent responsibility you have to try and raise that human to be the best they can be typically with the other parent if possible call me old-fashioned call me old call me whatever you want just don't call me brief because good damn this video was long as shit i gotta call it we gotta get the hell out of here thank you guys for watching i hope you had a giggle maybe a laugh i hate that i just said the word giggle but i'm not cutting it out i appreciate you guys if you don't mind hip thrusting that motherfucking like button for me subscribe if you haven't that'd be so wonderful we'll see you in the next video peace you